Hi, I'm very glad to be here again. Thank you very much for the second speech. And I'd like first to, to cheer the qualified audience in the person of uh, Gebran Neto. It, he, of course, is my colleague, but you know, he is doing a very important uh, work in Brazil. So congratulations for you and for everybody. Uh, it's very interesting to talk uh, after Marcus Asner, Asner and uh, because he, he was talking about FIFA, uh, soccer, football, according to the FIFA uh, uh, term. So I talk about football, not soccer. Um, and he, he said this something about private corruption. Um, so I will give my speech according to my, of course, personal perspective and also my judicial experience. First, uh, I don't consider uh, corruption inside the football a private corruption. Uh, my book, I wrote a book about this and I finished the book saying that when you touch a cultural value like football, Brazil is considered a football country, although the 7-1 Germany game, uh, trauma game we had in Brazil. But for us, it's very important football as a cultural value. So we celebrate our nationalism in, in football games, after football games. So we are proud of football. So my conclusion of my book was, first, uh, football is a cultural, Brazilian cultural value. So because of that, you don't need to treat, uh, treat the case involving football scandals, corruption scandals, like a private uh, case uh, without interest of public prosecution. Um, so uh, we are talking about sports and corruption. Yesterday, there was an arrest of the president of a Brazilian Olympic Committee because uh, he is suspected to intermediate uh, the acquisition of votes of the International Olympic Committee to select the Rio as a host of Olympic Games. So corruption, the sports again, and involve Brazilian. Um, I had a case, um, when I say I had it, it can be weird in English, but there was a case in, in the trial court of Sao Paulo, specialized court in money laundering, involving a big international scheme uh, through several countries uh, with uh, uh, participation of international soccer players, uh, staff from national associations, etc., 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 president of, uh, uh, of clubs, etc. Uh, the, the case, uh, the investigation of a case took at least two years in wiretapping. And two years before the selection of Brazil for hosting the FIFA World Cup, criminals were, uh, were saying that Brazil would be selected for the World Cup and more. They would say in Sao Paulo, they will construct a new stadium for the first game of the, the World Cup, two years before the selection of Brazil. Can be a coincidence? Can be. We never know because there was no, there was no enough investigation involving uh, these facts. And uh, as a judge, I cannot do anything waiting for the police and uh, the prosecuting behavior. So we needed to have in this particular uh, 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 fact, uh, we need to have 
have eager professionals to go through uh, sensitive uh, facts. Now I use the PowerPoint finally. So, of course, from Brazil, I need to, because when I put only Sao Paulo, there will be a big uh, discussion between two big cities in Brazil. So, Rio, you need to show all it. But, uh, sport is a vessel for the transmission of cultural and universal values, as I told before. And the large sums of money characterize today sports, football especially. Historically, lack of transparency is also a characteristic of the sports, of football. Uh, many times justified in the name of ensuring functioning and organization. Those are um, the responsibilities of football associations. When you talk about trying to investigate facts involving football, always you have information like this. This is something related to functioning and organization. So that's only our own responsibility. You cannot deal with this. Uh, you have some typologies and preventions of corruption in sport. I need to mention some cases that, uh, that was, uh, were in the, in, in, my trial, in the trial court of Sao Paulo. The first old case was two Colombian citizens were arrested in Brazil each of them carrying 7,000 and approximately $7,000 uh, too. One of the arrested person argued that he was the lawyer of a goalkeeper of Santos Football Cl Club, the same club of Pelé, and the money seized from them, around $14,000, was the lawyer's fee for a negotiation of that football player. But there was any, no uh, registration about this negotiation involving the uh, football, soc uh, football player. They were charged with attempt of committing of financial crime, flight of capital. Uh, uh, once the settlement condition, conditions were filled, the culpability was extinguished and the proceeding ended. You could not go forward after this. Um, the second case, that's the international big money laundering case, involves several countries. That what is very interesting about uh, Marcus Esner, uh, when the, the FIFA case came into the West, many people, uh, I mean, when I say people, investigators, were like this, uh, uh, forgot something good in, in this area. So, because uh, the same case that was investigating in Brazil was investigating, investigate, investigated in Switzerland, in France, uh, uh, Russia, and Brazil. Brazil uh, uh, had this case and the indictment of people, but the other country uh, uh, were just investigating, investigating, investigating. There was no uh, a big corporation among the countries. Each country investigate part of the facts, but not the whole fact itself. So uh, this case involved the, uh, um, uh, also called uh, a Russian mafia, and uh, it was confessedly said by the defendants that they were doing money laundering through uh, several, several clubs around the world, especially the big, big fishes uh, in Brazil, like uh, Corinthians. Corinthians is the biggest uh, popular club in Sao Paulo, the second popular club in Brazil after Flamengo. Also, target of this group of people, because they are saying after Corinthians, you are going to Flamengo to money laundering money too. And uh, there was a shame that the case uh, took so long in the end, uh, uh, the conclusion was that there was no enough evidence uh, 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 to 
convicted the defendant, but for the indictment, there was big evidence. evidence. And um, uh, you know what? Uh, two years of uh, wiretapping, you need to hear two he years of wiretapping. I heard. And uh, when uh, another professional say uh, there is no evidence, uh, I, I didn't understand. But OK. The third case, the car wash, we talked about car wash. Car wash was interesting because um, uh, revealed uh, plea bargains, bargainings, uh, revealed agreements among contractors to share works of stadiums for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Uh, Maracanã Stadium was rebuilt for the second time. And it cost 1.2 billion reais um, four million dollars. In Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, uh, they construct a, a stadium with capacity of 68,000 people, but there are no clubs in Brasilia. There is nothing Brasilia related to soccer, football. But there was, uh, uh, it was built a 1.5 billion um, uh, stadium uh, reais, uh, but in dollars is $468 million, overpriced it in 1 billion reais, 1 billion reais. Can you imagine this $312 million overpriced in corruption? <coughs> it was confessed, all right. And you have the same proceedings process in Amazon, the state of Amazon in Manaus. Manaus, there is no uh, single football club, and it was built uh, a big stadium there. In other uh, states, also in Belo Horizonte, was confessed to. Ah, I needed to mention another case that I didn't mention here. I remember after. There, are, uh, there was also a big investment, millions of dollars, from a church, Asian church, in a club in the countryside of Sao Paulo. It's too small club. I never heard the club before. No one knows about this club, so football club, but it was millions. And the police, federal police in Brazil was investigating, but could not get the, the, the result that we are expecting to have. So the common fact is that uh, uh, goods, the goods seized were the proceeds of suspicious activities. Since the negotiation itself, in many cases, was done with cash. It was cash in cash payments. Investigation and accusation of laundering money, which was illegally obtained in several countries, can be noticed the supposed use of front of smurf partners. Uh, we say in Portuguese, laranja, or shell companies assisted by specialized law firms. That's uh, very common in money laundering cases, not only in, f in football. So you had uh, uh, personal prevent measures, arrest, seizure, frozen sequestration uh, of confiscation of assets. And there, uh, I, I, I think I, I should mention here yeah, yeah. Messi and Neymar, two of the best football players in, in the world. Of course, Neymar is the best. Uh, have been in the spotlight, uh, tangled in tax evasion cases, chaining money in a transfer deal through shell companies in tax havens. It's very common, related to soccer, uh, football cases, illegal cases. So, talking about illegal betting. Mm, pre premiums arising from bets with dirt mud are also illegal and subject to seizure, freeze, and confiscation. Mods, mods operandi. It's very common in Brazil, people acquiring lottery tickets from actual awarded people. Knowing awarded people or even lottery owners from where tickets are bought, criminals can apply for the reward of the winner collusion between employees or lottery owners and offenders. Dirty money changes hands. Repeated lottery awards to the same individual in short periods of time challenge the most rudimentary notions of mathematical probability. Although the possibility of several awards to the same person 
is near zero, the principle of indubitable parallel could always be invoked. Uh, in, in Sao Paulo, we had several cases, investigations, uh, involved people who, had, uh, who made a fortune with, uh, uh, with no justification except when you consider and they confessed had uh, uh, been prized for lottery prizes. Uh, we have tens, uh, people confessed, tens and hundreds of prizes in short period of time. Uh, in the past, you had a, a politician very famous in Brazil who justify his fortune and say, I was awarded in lottery uh, prizes, so that's why I have this fortune. He, uh, and he has all these papers, all the documents showing the, this. And I, I heard some defendants say in front of me, yes, uh, I had one case that more, uh, the defendant um, uh, said that he uh, was lucky because he, he had more than 100 prizes from lottery. That's why he had a huge uh, uh, property, a wealth uh, property. And uh, you know, uh, and uh, he could uh, document this. And uh, yesterday, I don't know if everybody was here, uh, were, uh, were here, I told about ENCLA. ENCLA is the national strategy against corruption and the money laundering in Brazil. What does it mean? Uh, annually, there is a big meeting defining goals or actions for the next year. And the small groups uh, join du during the year and discuss the better action, whether changing the law, uh, improve the law, or just some bylaws must be issued by uh, uh, by the, the bodies, uh, uh, certain bodies, bodies. So one of the suggestions of the ENCLA was to change the law and require from, from, the, from the bidders uh, the identification number when they go through lottery houses. But it was not accepted uh, in Brazil. So 60% of sports betting websites in the world are for football. The Financial Action Tax Force uh, reports that money laundering is used in football in the follow following up typologies. Are you um, highlighted here bets, because I'm talking now about bets. F uh, 15,000 sport betting websites in the world, 85% is considered illegal. These websites generate more money than sport itself, 10 to 100 times. Illicit deals can take place not only about the outcome of a game, but also the name of points or goals, the amount of corners, or yellow or red cards, etc. It's possible to buy off players, clubs, and referees to fix games. On the 27,000 football games played each year under the rules of the Union of European Football Association, 7% are suspected of manipulation. Players themselves who have time and money in excess also engage in on internet bet betting and as a result, have you been targeted for their bets and debts? debts. So, illegal betting proposals, uh, some ideas, a way to control such, such gambling websites and the flow of money involved, what is no easy. Also, sporting fraud as a crime, a specific crime, sensitizing or convincing players, making them able to resist any pressures and report to re authorities. As online gambling is a global phenomenon, an effective international regulator should be formed to monitor the man management, accountability, efficiency, and sector 
proportionality of the stakeholders involved in order to sustain market confidence in trading by promoting public understanding in addition to maintaining an appropriate degree of protection for consumers. The internet provides individuals worldwide with the ability to communicate and exchange information across national boundaries and continent. So this is uh, enough for this. Uh, prevent money laundering in the football industry. Uh, the FATF, uh, when you uh, see the recommendation 22nd for this designated non-financial businesses and professions, they, uh, FATF doesn't mention any word word about uh, sport or football, only considers casinos, casinos, real estate agents, dealers in precious metals and stones, lawyers, no notaries, trust, company service providers. Uh, a suggestion of ENCLA, again ENCLA, uh, uh, made it possible to change our law, Brazilian uh, Money Laundering Act, and uh, um, we could add uh, obligo, obligers, I don't know what to say in English, obligers, uh, add obligers to uh, report suspicious, suspicious activity reports. So what you have in Brazil, natural or legal persons acting in the promotion, mediation, trade, the deal of transfer, athletic rights, must report suspicious activity reports. What is astonishing in Brazil that since the law, we had just two suspicious activity reports, although just uh, during this year, till from January to April 2017, we had 614 international transfers from Brazil to abroad. When you go through Brazilian Federation, uh, Confederação Brasileira de Futebol, uh, Brazilian Federation Football uh, Confederation, sorry. Uh, then you can see, they say they are very transparent. They see uh, that the, the amount of transfer was about three, more than 300 million reais. But when you see um, investigations, uh, from journalists who have an article in Brazil talking about international transfer, they say about one billion, just this year, one billion uh, reais. So there is a big gap between the official registration and investigation from journalists. That's something to be considered. Um, uh, suggestion, secondly, football clubs could uh, be uh, obliged to keep a record of every contract and related mediation contracts for at least five years. Foreign exchange, exchange contracts arising from remittance to individuals or legal entities related to football should be guaranteed by the contracts between the clubs and their football players. So I made uh, several suggestions. I can share my, my point points after. But I'd like to, to highlight the, one of them. Uh, it's the 11th. I'll go direct to. I know it's 10 here. I hope to come back. <laughs> the red? OK, perfect. Uh, no, it's different. OK. So, FIFA regulated what FIFA calls uh, intermediaries before it was uh, transfer agents. So, FIFA regulate, regulated recently the legal framework of uh, football intermediaries. It calls regulations on work with intermediaries so that their concept addresses all trading beyond, beyond clubs and agents in a transfer agreements. Under FIFA's rules, 
An intermediary is a person who performs a paid function that takes a player to negotiate or renegotiate a contract of employment with a club or two clubs through a contract transfer. Uh, now it's my point of view. The concept is quite simple because the agent can perform a variety of functions, even unpaid ones, other than contract of transfers. Those who negotiate license agreements for image use is not an intermediary for FIFA. Sponsorship and advertising, advices in tax, labor, accounting, investments, management, uh, insurance premiums, and private pension systems, coordinates travel, assists in personal and family matters, and chooses medical treatment, future career, paths, staff, etc. So FIFA saw just one single part of the problem. Uh, I, I don't want to tell that FIFA has no a good, uh, uh, um, a good uh, behavior now after all this coming up on the media and the, uh, after uh, a wonderful investigation by the West. Uh, but you know, when you consider the conditions that FIFA imposed to Brazil to accept hosting the World Cup, uh, I started to double about the good faith of some members of FIFA. For instance, conditions imposed to Brazil to host the 2014 World Cup. All members of FIFA, all businessmen nominated by FIFA, and all free ends of FIFA has the right to tax free. Brazil had to sign a document from the uh, high staff of government, government we call minister, uh, 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 committing, uh, being committed to this. Also, uh, all free ends of FIFA had the right for visa uh, in any condition, in any condition. No civil liability or criminal liability for any FIFA member or any FIFA free end member. Any FIFA nominated free end member. And Brazil signed a document. And what was most, uh, most surprising for me is that under FIFA conditions, it was prohibited in Brazil uh, arrest from the judiciary branch, because FIFA imposed an uh, administrative tribunal created uh, according to FIFA's rules. And Brazil signed this, saying I accept it, although it's clearly incon unconstitutional. Uh, how could the arrest, a warrant can be delivered not for a judge, but administrative decision? And what was very um, sad for me is that this particular document was signed by a minister in that time. Today is a justice of a Brazilian Supreme Court. Ah, that's it. Thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> are you summarize? I think it's too, too late. Uh, just an overview. It's a very challenging uh, title, very difficult to deal with all the uh, money laundering scheme involving soccer, but I'm sure uh, I'm happy with the US investigation because it was brave enough to do something good. Uh, since many, I'm not talking people, but many investigators, and many people who I talked to in the past uh, belonging to prosecution in several countries knew that something very wrong was uh, inside FIFA's wonderful world uh, football environment. Thank you very much. So thanks a lot.